Sir William Seal. Mr Speaker, the Labour opposition supports this bill and supports it because we did not want to be responsible for putting the environment in a potential risk if, if this piece of legislation does not pass. And I'll talk more about that. The second point, sir, is that we have been critical of the, very, the relevant ministers right from the outset when the main act was passed and debated in this house in 2012 and we said then that the main act was poorly drafted it was weak legislation and this bill is evidence sir of what we said then the third point i will make in my concluding remarks sir, is to acknowledge that despite our criticism of the minister and this government that we do acknowledge that the select committee that reviewed this piece of legislation actually improved the legislation. And I give credit to the chairman, uh, Mr. Scott Simpson, in the way that he ushered through our debates and discussion. And I would suggest to that side of the house that he ought to be a fine replacement for a minister that I saw last week seem very frail, seem all beaten up. And the last thing, sir, is I would commend strongly uh, those who took the time from the public to submit to this piece of legislation, because it's not a piece of legislation that's inviting of the public to make submissions to. Um, it was a piece of legislation that only had four clauses, and the first clause, sir, was really about the title, and I said in the whole Committee of the House that the title is a mouthful exclusive economic zone and continental shelf environmental effects transitional provisions amendment bill and that itself so prevents a lot of our public on participating and coming forward in fact the first thing is you would wonder what the legislation really is all about and the title does not give it away clause two of the bill is a standard clause clause three is then makes reference that the main act is goes back to 2012 the act that came into force in 2013 and i repeat again our criticism of the minister then and of the present minister in this portfolio was they rushed through legislation uh, it was poorly drafted it was weak legislation and again this bill having us being here in this house debating this bill is evidence of what we said the fact that the government members pointed out the fact that we also had legislation in the in the previous government that needed uh, improvement so I, I would say to the government don't don't use that argument because you the government is present government is now in charge and has the power to make these changes if they so wish by using the argument that previous governments made mistakes actually sends a bad message to the public because what they're saying is that because previous government made mistakes, it's okay for us to make mistakes. Our role as His Her Majesty's Royal Opposition is to help the government provide good legislation. And if they stop being arrogant, because the sign of an arrogant government is when they stop listening to the opposition, and that's what I mean. If they stop being argument and actually listen to the opposition, this legislation would have been a far better piece of legislation, the main act, in 2012, and we would not have to debate this here today. I, I acknowledge that they did, on this occasion, listen to some of the submitters, to the public submitters. And in the whole, uh, it was the workings of the committee, chaired by Mr. Scott Simpson, that we have a piece of legislation that I think um, that we are pleased uh, to, to support. The final clause of the legislation, sir, is really the principal, is the major amendment, which the reason why we are having to amend, sir, is because Shell Tired Oils Services, which is the company that uh, owns Maui Gas, operates Maui Gas platform, if this amendment does not pass, we then put at risk the environment by having to temporarily close the operations of the Maui platform at great cost and also potentially put the environment at risk. That is the sole reason why we're, we're supporting this. 
by amending this legislation, it allows Shell Title Oils to put their resource consent in, barring the, the, any appeals that may come in place. I note, sir, that some of the amendments were quite critical of the fact, and I reiterate what some others have said, that for a company such as Shell Tide Oils, this, they, some of the submitters says, surely they would have had the means and the resources to have got their act in, in place so that they would have entered their resource consent with sufficient time uh, taking in consideration any potential appeals that might have come their way. But in this occasion, we have had to amend the bill to give them sufficient time in order for the Maui gas operations to continue and not to put the environment at risk. Some of the key issues raised by submitter, sir, was that they did not want to provide an open-ended time frame for existing operations to continue outside the Exclusive Economic Zone Act regime. And I think the Select Committee heard that, the Select Committee took note of that, and as a result, we put a time frame of, of nine months. The, another key issue that was raised by submitter, sir, was the preferential treatment for the petroleum ministry. Now, we haven't talked about this in the debates, but it is an issue, sir, that comes up time and time again by many in this country of ours that are concerned about the way this government seems to be able to freely argue for purely economic reasons that it is okay to exploit uh, oil and gas um, without any due consideration for our environment. And I think the rhetoric about maintaining a balance, I think the public still needs to see evidence of that. That yes, we can, uh, we can exploit <laughs> for economic reasons, but where is, the, where is the, the protection of the environment? Where does that lay? Where does that lie? Who becomes responsible for the wreckage of the environment? If that, because in many cases on an international level, sir, we see examples of that with oil spills in other parts of the world and whatnot. We've been fortunate, but that does not mean, sir, that we are immune. And I think, sir, if we're running, if we're allowing companies to believe that they can run roughshod over our legislation, and if governments aren't vigilant to where they are producing legislation that are weak and poorly drafted, as in the case of the main piece of legislation, then we put our environment at, at risk. I remember some of our elders, sir, who often will remind us, uh, and these are mana whenua and tamaki makaura, who often remind us, sir, that they have a view, a world view about protecting the environment. And the reason being, sir, is we're passing the environment to the next generation. What is it that we pass on to the next generation if we do not take care about the present environment that we're living in? And so to argue that purely for economic reasons, it's okay to allow uh, certain companies to have unfettered powers to exploit and to explore our environment, I think, sir, I'm just issuing a word of caution to the government that if they talk about the blue-green uh, argument, then they need to produce how is it that they are protecting this environment for the next generation coming through. I want to acknowledge the submitters. There were few submitters in it, but I say again that I'm grateful for the, the way that they conducted themselves, the evidence that they produced, and thankfully all members of the select committee were able to take on board what they said and I think that's what we saw in the final uh, draft of this bill here. Thank you.